welcome back. It's good to see you all again. Today we're going to be playing some Animal Crossing, um, and I'm going to be using it basically to detox from the day. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, jump right in and not waste any more time. <coughs> Excuse me. So the last time I left off, I was um, just wandering around my island. Um, and I'm probably not going to do much today, just the usual cleaning the island, you know, doing the daily chores, talking to my villagers, you know, stuff like that. You know, let's see. What should I wear? Hmm. Let's go with the Chesterfield with black pants, well, well, corduroys, dark blue, light blue, yeah, wait, black, yeah, let's do the gray hat, switch to the brown lines, let's do Hmm. Stripe socks, and then we'll do the boots. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Let's see what's going on on the island today, shall we? So I recently got into um, Critical Role for the first time, mostly because I watched the Vox Machina animated series on Amazon. And it's kind of inspired me to get back into Dungeons and Dragons. So if I do something with that in the next few weeks, you guys now know why. <laughs> um, but I haven't really played Dungeons and Dragons since like 2018, so I'm a little out of practice. Good evening, everyone. Right now on Titan, it's 10.29 p.m. on Sunday, April 17th, 2022. I hope you're excited, because today is Bunny Day. Oh, I forgot that today is Bunny Day. Does that mean I have to deal with Zipper? <sighs> Perhaps we have a special visitor. Hint, hint. I'm sure there's a lot of fun in store for us today, so stop by the plaza if you have a chance. With that, I'll get back to work supporting you in your enjoyment of our island. Thanks, Isabel. Music is different. Oh, everybody's wearing egg suits. It's funny day at last. Let's try to collect as many eggs as we can, Dusk. No, I'm I'm not gonna do that. I hope you know I'm gonna ignore Bunny Day as much as I possibly can. I'm, I have no interest in indulging Zipper's crazy bullshit. Hey, Paula. Enjoying my day, kid? Because I gotta tell you, all this egg hunt nonsense is exhausting. be no puns on my stream. Get. Actually, you know. 
it's finally bunny day. We both know what that means. Time to hunt down some eggs, Dusk. Hi, Ketchup. The egg hunt is on. It's bunny day, and that means it's egg time. Let's get right to it, Chump. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It said chump, but it actually said chump. I just made Ketchup out to be so much ruder than she actually is. She's not rude at all. Ketchup is such a sweetheart. You know what today is, right? It's Bunny Day! The day when we're all bunnies. Oh, that's not how it works? Well, I can work with that. We'll still have fun, won't we? See him up in the corner, just taking a rest. And then the second that my character gets close, <laughs> faker. Boingity boing! Hey there, Skipper! It's me, Zipper. I'm the lucky yellow bunny, and I'm here to say there's something special hippity happening today. Uh oh, I forgot. He speaks in rhyme. Fun. Yay! Let's all clap! Anytime now. I know what you're thinking. No, this is not a costume. And don't go snooping, got it? Zippity zap, that's enough of that. Let's talk about why I'm here. It's the spread bunny day cheer. Today is a very special day, which is why I want everyone to go outside and play. I have a wonderful Bunny Day game. Listen close and I'll explain. Ready? Yippity skippity, here it is. The time has come. Let's look for eggs. That's my bunny plan. They're here. They're there. They're everywhere. Find them, if you can. Did I make my thought clear? Yes, no, maybe so? Hmm, how about this? There are six types of eggs hidden around the island, you see. So wonderful of, so one, wonderful old you should go look for them and bring them back to wonderful old me. These eggs aren't hidden inside buildings, no sorry. My eggs can only be found in the great outdoors. Shake the trees, smack the rocks, and don't forget to fish. Search the sky and check the ground. That's my only wish. If you find all six types, I'll give you a funny bunny reward. And here's a little something I made for you, too. There are ten stone eggs for you to use. If you craft with them, there's no way you can lose. And now, a grand announcement. Are you listening, kid? Whatever, here it is. Bunny Day themed DIY recipes are hidden all around this very island. A special prize awaits that lucky somebody who finds and crafts all my Bunny Day recipes. Now shake that cotton tail and give me hop to it. I'll be waiting. For all the villagers, he doesn't give a shit. He's like, eh, whatever. Y'all can watch me, y'all can not. Who cares? <laughs> oh, wait. Am I even going to be able to find any fossils today? Or are all of them going to be eggs?
bomb. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend you watch it. It's very, it's a very cute series. It's basically like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but with anime. And like, okay, so it, it's, it's Mr. and Mrs. Smith if they had a daughter, and the story was told from the daughter's point of view. <laughs> because the the protagonists are the husband is a spy, the wife is an assassin. And they're both, I think, tasked with protecting this little girl. But the little girl doesn't know that they're a spy and an assassin. She just thinks that they're her parents. And thinks that they're cool. So the- oh my god, Raymond. Hey, buddy. You look ridiculous. Bonnie Day, are you with me? Are we gonna hippity hop to the moon and get some eggs? Yes, thank you for that truly vital piece of information. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to pick on Raymond, but, you know, it's fun to do it. And I don't mean any, any actual harm to him. I love him. I'm just messing with him. I got so many frickin' Earth Eggs. Earth Eggs, Earth Eggs, please be mine. No. Oh my god, Stitches. <laughs> he just emerged from the tree line. I got so scared for a minute. I was like, who was that? Oh my god. Stitches, sweetie, you scared me. Hi, honey. I'm gonna meet an egg laying bunny and thank him for making today so special. Stitches, sweetie, bunnies don't lay eggs. That's why I know where about it. I don't want to burst Stitches' bubble. He's too innocent to, you know. Hurt feelings, hurt his feelings. I feel like if I did hurt his feelings, I would just want to charge headfirst into a door frame. You hurt the feelings of your favorite character, who's a total sweetheart. Ah, great. Uh, let me just go ahead and jump into this open vat of scalding hot chocolate. Vox Machina, and I started watching the uh, first campaign of Critical Role. It's kind of weird because of um, the fact that the original campaign has an extra character in it that doesn't appear in the animated series, but, you know. I watched the animated series first, so I'm more used to the dynamic of the seven main characters, and I've heard that the extra eighth character isn't in the series for very long, so... I think they, they... I think he leaves around, like, episode 27, so... That's only, like... It, and the first campaign is, like, 115 episodes, so he's only in, like, one-fourth of the story. But, you know, not a big deal. I don't know why the they wrote the character off, but I heard that there was like some kind of controversy with the actor who were, created the character, so they had to take him out of the series, which is unfortunate because Critical Role just seems like such a great environment 
and the fact that I, I always thought that they were one of those like really squeaky clean series that never had any kind of like trouble. But I guess even a series like that, you end up with something happening. And thankfully, they've been able to thrive despite it and become, you know, popular enough to get their own freaking animated series. And I'm super proud of them. You know, because a lot of the people involved in Critical Role Productions and the people who do the characters and all that are people like us who enjoy nerd culture and they were able to find a way to make a living out of it because they're really passionate about it. And I really admire that kind of stuff because it's things that it's the, the kind of thing I want to do. That's why I do this, because I love games, but I want to make something out of it, you know? And I want to have fun, and but not just play games and have fun. I want to have fun with games I've never played and share it with you guys, you know? I want you guys to be a part of my experience with new games that I play, because I want to share that, you know, that first time thrill of playing a game you've never played before. I want to share that with you. And I feel like the the true like modus operandi behind Critical Role is the fact that they all love Dungeons and Dragons. They just love it and they want to share their sessions with the world. And it was essentially it started out as them just having fun and being friends and hanging out. And they decided, huh, let's just record this and see what happens. And it became a critical success. And I'm super proud of them for it. Because I don't... I don't really see... You know, there's this, like, weird disconnect between celebrities and people. You know, I... I, I know it's a weird thing to say, but I don't see people like Kim Kardashian as a real person because she never portrays herself as a real person. She always portrays herself as this, like, icon to be looked up to. And I think that's what she wants for people to, like, admire her. But the, the cast of Critical Role doesn't come across like that at all. They feel like peers to me. Like people that I could just talk to if I ever met them on the street. I would be a little bit starstruck because, you know, I'd be like, holy shit, Travis Willingham, you know? Like, you're, you're Grog, you're my favorite character. But, you know, I he's just a guy. He's a very talented guy, but he's still just a guy. And, you know, I just, I feel like because I see them as peers, I'm more happy for them because I feel like they're my friends on some level and them succeeding makes me happy. You know? I don't know. I, I Maybe that's a weird thing to say, but just watching Critical Role, it gives you that kind of like, let's play feeling of just sitting down and hanging out with a friend. I think that's why let's plays have been so popular over the years because the fun of sitting down and hanging out with someone that you enjoy hanging out with and playing games with them is is enjoyable. It's a nice experience to have and so sitting down and hanging out with the cast a critical role and watching them play Dungeons and Dragons is enjoyable because it feels like you're just hanging out with your friends, you know? And it's, it's cozy and there's no toxicity to it. You're just having fun. And I really love that kind of stuff. Obviously. You know? And yeah, I mean, sometimes I get upset at games specifically Soulsborne games, but, you know, that's just part of those games. You can't really escape that aspect of Bloodborne or Elden Ring, or because getting upset is just, honestly, for me, it's part of the experience. <laughs> Losing and getting killed by a random enemy that you didn't expect, or getting curb stomped by a boss that you don't know the moveset for is just all part of the Elden Ring experience, all part of the Bloodborne experience. You know? I mean, I haven't played Bloodborne in a while, but... And the last time I played it, I was super overleveled, so... I wasn't really 
getting super challenged by any of the stuff I was fighting in my new game plus playthrough. And I think that's one of the reasons why I stopped playing it, because... In my original playthrough, I was overleveled, but I wasn't too overleveled. And I feel like in my New Game Plus playthrough, I was able to overlevel myself to the point that everything seems kind of superfluous. That's I, and I think that's why I stopped doing the Bloodborne playthrough, because I just, for some reason, I wasn't really feeling it anymore. I, I didn't have the same passion for playing the game that I did when I originally played it. And I've gone back and played it in my free time since then, and the passion has come back, so I guess it's just... I don't know. I'm probably gonna finish it eventually. I might finish it after I finish Elden Ring. Like, as, as a way to commemorate the ending of Elden Ring, I'll go back and finish Bloodborne also. I was on the latter half of the game, I believe. I think the last thing I did before I stopped was beat the One Reborn. So I just had to do the last few areas. The Nightmare Frontier, the Nightmare of Mensis. And then after that, it's just the DLC area and the final boss. Of course, the DLC area is also the hardest area in the entire game. So doing that area would probably take at least two to three episodes. Just like an entire episode dedicated to the Hunter's Nightmare, an entire de episode dedicated to um, the Research Hall, and then another episode dedicated to just the Fishing Hamlet and trying to be... Actually, no, now that I think about it, the first episode would be the Research Hall and attempting to beat Ludwig. <laughs> one, hour for the ha one hour for the Hunter's Nightmare, sorry, and one hour for Ludwig. And then you'd have one hour for the research hall and an extra hour for trying to beat Maria. <laughs> and then the third episode would be the fishing hamlet and all the attempts against the orphan cops. <laughs> because uh, that boss is just... Oh boy, that boss is a lot. I saw Dom over here. I forgot to say hi. Hi Dom! How you doing, buddy? Oh yeah, it's bunny day. Time to flex those egg hunting muscles. The you hunt, the more tasty and lusty soreness you'll get. I am way too pumped for this rad. I love you, darling. You goofball. Just slipping. Uh, yeah. But I think the other thing that has made me like really interested in being critical role is just the idea of going back and doing Dungeons and Dragons again because when I first played Dungeons and Dragons back in 2017, I, I found out that you can actually do custom campaigns. Like, you don't have to stick to the lore of the original Dungeons & Dragons, you know, setup. You can create your own world with your own, you know, your own lore, your own rules. And obviously that's what Matt Mercer and the people in Critical Role did, because the setting of Dungeons & Dragons is... The Sunday setting of Critical Role is based off of Dungeons & Dragons, but... The setting itself, like the characters of the world, is all the creation of Mercer and the people he plays with. So when I found that out, I was like, huh. And so I started developing a world of my own that I've been developing since 2018. And, you know, slowly tweaking it and changing it little bit by bit. And now, you know, all these years later... I finally start watching Critical Role in, you know, back to back, and I've started to develop that world again. You know, I mentioned it briefly in my Dragon Age playthrough, um, but I 
I really do want to f finish writing all this stuff down. I found a, a world, world Anvil, an old World Anvil account that I created a while back um, that I meant to use to write down all the information about the world that I had. And I, I found it, and there was very little on there, so I just picked it up again and started writing stuff for it. And hopefully I maintain the passion and the energy this time to actually finish it. I really hope I do, because it's a, it's a world that I've been making for a while, and I really want to make something out of it. I don't want to leave it by the wayside again, you know? I feel like now that I'm doing this, um, I have a platform for that, because I, I've been thinking about possibly after I'm done developing it, as like making videos centric around that the only thing I would have to come up with is finding um, some people to play with me you know just Dungeons and Dragons enthusiasts who are willing to jump into my world and help me out in developing it because one of the best parts of Critical Role is that it doesn't have one writer it's not just Matt Mercer who wrote the world it's all of them he, he wrote the basic setting of the world, but, you know, the way the story develops is entirely determined by the cast. You know, Sam and Laura and all the rest of them. If it wasn't for them and their portrayal of their characters, the story wouldn't have gone the way it went. You know, it, there's always a, a huge disconnect between having a story be developed by multiple people or one person. And sometimes having it developed by multiple people can make it very chaotic and hard to understand. But other times it can lead to some gold. It can lead to, you know, gems of a story that you don't expect. Like the campaigns in Critical Role, which are really good. Because they have such a variety of writing through their multiple creators. <clears throat> And there are also stories that are good because they're written by one person, you know. Like Blood Meridian or the Dark Tower series. I don't think Dark Tower would have been as good as it was if Stephen King didn't write it on his own. But I also feel like stories like the Critical Role campaigns in Dark Tower are very different. I feel like the Critical Role campaigns are not meant to be like big continuous stories. They're meant to be more like little isolated vignettes. Like, like issues of the week. Each arc in the campaign is a different issue of the week for the cast to deal with. And sometimes they have connecting threads. But more often than not, they serve as brand new adventures for the cast to experience. Whereas Dark Tower is one giant long narrative spread across seven books. So, you know. Hi, Blathers. Good evening, Dusk. Welcome to the Titan Museum. May I be of service? Oh, what would you like me to assess? I'm all a flutter. Mm, assess these for me. Thank you. Oh, more than one, I see. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Yes, indeed. Quite splendid. The last our museum already has fossils such as these. But I would be tempted to purchase these for my personal collection. But no, I must exercise restraint and return them to you now. Might I help you with anything else? Enjoy the game. Please enjoy the rest of your visit. Time to go say hi to Brewster. Are you ready? I was hoping I'd see you today. Care for some coffee? It's 200 pounds a cup. 
Sure. I brewed this cup especially for you. Drink up, goo. Hmm, it's just a bit bitter. And that's how I like it. Cool. Thank you very much. That was your weekly dose of Brewster. I don't know why I just love going to the roost. It just has this, this very nice calming aura to it. Just watching... I don't know what it is for me. Watching Brewster make the coffee is just so relaxing, you know? It's weird, but I feel like you guys did it. Hmm. You see, that's how... Welcome to Nook's Cranny. I have never heard this music in this game before. Is this like Bunny Day exclusive music? I like it. It sounds kind of like the kind of music that you would hear at the end of, like, a mid-90s family sitcom. Like, this is the kind of song I would hear, I would expect to hear during Robin Williams' final monologue in Mrs. Doubtfire. Or, this is, the kind of mo this is the kind of music I would expect to play at the end of Matilda, when she finally gets adopted by the better family. Or, the kind of music that would play during one of Fred Savage's outros at the end of an episode of Wonder Years, you know? <laughs> it's just... It has a certain vibe to it, you know? That you just... takes you back to a certain time and place. I like it. It's nice. It has a nice vibe to it. As much as we can enjoy your company, it's past our closing hours for today. Oh shit! I well, we look forward to seeing you here again another time, another time. <laughs> That's fun. I literally sat listening to the music for so long that I didn't notice it was almost eleven o'clock. And I lost my chance to sell my stuff. <laughs> Yo, I have so much respect for Timmy and Tommy now. I don't think I've ever see had that happen to me where I'm in a store right before it closes. Both in Animal Crossing and in real life. It's happened to me before because I work in a restaurant. And people stay past closing at our restaurant all the time. And it is the most infuriating bullshit I have ever had to deal with in my life. Like, I did not know how truly rage-inducing it was to watch someone just ignore you as you're trying to mop the floor around them after you've turned off the lights and the music and the TVs, and they just don't get the hint, and they're still there. <laughs> and they're just like, nope. I'm going to keep on eating, even though you guys clearly are trying to clean the store so you can go home. It just, it, 
it betrays a lack of self-awareness for the customers on in my opinion either they don't realize it or they're just they don't care about the employees at all i don't know i mean i i feel like i'm speaking from a biased point of view but i don't think i would ever do something like that and then again once again biased point of view I wouldn't do that because I've been on the receiving end of that, so I really wish I could get rid of this. That's a lost journal that belonged to one of my villagers and I forgot to give it to them. And if you keep a lost item for more than one day, it just, it becomes nothing. It's just a item taking up space and I can't do anything with it, so. All right. Let's go on an egg hunt. I also recently rewatched um, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I don't know why. It's a shitty movie, but it was so bad that it was good. Like, it was bad in a hilarious way, you know? Leaf eggs. Stone eggs, earth eggs, sky eggs. Does that mean there's water eggs? Zipper did say to check the water, didn't he? I haven't fished in so long. For a second, I thought the um, the little thing on my fishing pole, what's it called, the bo the bobber? I can't remember. Um, it looked like Kyogre <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> like I thought I saw it had like a red stripe across it, and I was like, holy shit! I mean, Animal Crossing and Pokemon are owned by the same company, so I wouldn't be surprised. They're both Nintendo, right? Or do different publishing companies own them? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, Bunny Day fan though, so I don't really, you know, not really into the egg collecting thing. Do I know that? Oh, I don't. I'm always surprised when I find another DIY recipe that I don't know because I'm shocked that I had, I had, haven't found them all yet. Playing this game for so dang long. How many hours do I have? Hold on, I'm just curious. <laughs> that. That is way more than I thought it was gonna be. That is way more than I thought it was going to be. 925. 925. 925. <laughs> that is way higher than I thought it was going to be. I, I did not. I thought it was going to be like 700 or something. Not holy shit. I 
Sure. You're not uh, doing anything for Bunny Day? Not your thing, huh? Yeah, I feel you. As long as you want, my salsa is your salsa. Isn't my house really clean? I have to clean it in a couple of weeks, or my aunt friends won't go home. That's gross. You have to clean at least once a week. It's like a requirement. I mean, I like, well, pot calling the kettle black, I need to vacuum my carpet. But I dust as often as I possibly can, especially around this area. Because getting dust in your technology is really bad for it. At least I think it is. I don't know. For sure. Probably talking out of my ass again. Which happens very often. So. Right. Diana is also not a bunny day person. I feel that. I feel that. Oh, she's wearing that uh, suit that I gave her. Darling, sit down, stay a while, make yourself at home, darling. I noticed that something about Bunny Day that puts a bounce in my step. You must be seeing all those eggs dressed up in their most stylish attire, dearie. Bye, Diana. Hmm. Oh boy. Oof, excuse me. Is anybody over here inside their houses? No. Nope. Diana and Sherb are the only party poopers. <laughs> That's fine. I don't want to really participate in Bunny Day either, so I completely understand how they feel. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess that's it. You know, it's another short stream, but that's exactly what I was expecting to do. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching this in the future, then please be sure to follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash gtallstead. Be sure to subscribe at youtube.com slash jareboytv. I have a Patreon. It's only $5 a month. You'd really be helping me out. Patreon.com slash gtallstead. My social medias are all on the about page on my Twitch channel. And, um, yeah, thank you so much for your continued support. I really do appreciate it. I love you. I miss you already. And hopefully I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.